Hey, I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and this is part of the Zapier example series to give you some automation inspiration in your business. Now, if you are like me, you might find it kind of tedious to go and find links to your old blog posts. For example, when someone asks a question in a Facebook group that you think an old post of yours can answer, you might have to dig through your old site, uh, maybe, maybe even search for your, your blog or like go to your blog page and type in some keywords to try and find a post just to get a link to send to that person. So in today's video, you're going to learn a really simple trick to create your own uh, content library, if you will, uh, in a spreadsheet spreadsheet for a quick reference to all the blog posts that you've ever made. So if you ever uh, need to jump in there and grab one, it's really quick. This saves me a bunch of time. It sounds really simple, but this is actually a massive time saver for me. And it even doubles as our content promotion checklist. So I'll show you shortly, but each column becomes a promotional activity that we can tick off. First though, there are a lot of things about Zapier that I don't show in every single video, just so I'm not repeating the same things over and over. So if you would like to learn how to use Zapier to automate tasks in your business, uh, jump over to jimmyrose.me slash Zapier. Uh, this is a course that will show you how to save loads of time with Zapier, even if you've never used it uh, before. But otherwise, let's jump on with creating this Zap. First, here's a little preview of my sheet that I was talking about before. So we simply have a title, a URL, and a publish date. That's all I really need. Uh, you could also pull other information into here like categories if you wanted to categorize your posts and, and be able to filter uh, in the spreadsheet. My purposes are pretty simple. I literally just want to see the title of the post and the link so I can just copy it out uh, into a Facebook group or whatever it is uh, where I need to put that link. So let's jump over to Zapier and I'll show you how to set this up. Of course, I'm assuming that you already have an account. Uh, so if not, make sure you go and create one now. Um, but otherwise, we're going to click this make a zap button. And because this one will only be a two step zap, you should be able to do this on the free plan of Zapier. Now, there are actually two different ways to do this. So what we want to do is trigger when a new post happens on our blog, right? So if you're using WordPress, you could use the actual WordPress app uh, or you could use RSS by Zapier. So RSS tends to work on pretty much any website that has a feed enabled and WordPress does uh, there are a couple of differences here. Like if you use the WordPress one, you can import some extra information like uh, the category of the post or custom fields. If you have custom fields set up in your WordPress install, then you can actually bring that information through into uh, our action or into that spreadsheet. If you don't know what custom fields are, you probably don't need this. So to keep things simple, I'm just gonna stick with RSS for now. And then we're gonna choose a trigger event of a new item in the feed. And now we're going to put in the feed URL. And this is just the RSS feed for your site, which tends to be at uh, your URL slash feed, especially with uh, WordPress. You may need to look into the back end of your site or search around for whatever platform you're using if it's not WordPress to find what the feed URL is. Uh, but if I copy that into a browser window, it's not exactly helpful to read, but this is what Zapier will actually be reading. You don't need to read it. Um, so that's the only thing we need to fill out there. So if you go continue and then do a test, this will pull in uh, some of the items from our RSS feed. So you can see their favorite purchases of 2019. This was one of my last blog posts uh, and it's got the link there and, and a bunch of other data like the published date. Uh, and you'll see, we'll use this very shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, this first item here uh, and then go to done editing. And now we wanna add this to a spreadsheet. You don't have to be using Google Sheets for this. That's what I'm using in this example, but as long as Zapier supports whatever app you're using, as an action, then you should be able to add this post to anything you like. For example, you might want to add it to your project management system in a list like a Trello, for example, if you're not familiar with Trello, uh, there's various columns and you can put uh, sort of to-do items or cards within each column. And so you could actually just drop each blog post as a card or like a to-do list uh, in your project management system. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and use Google Sheets. And for the action event, we're going to create a spreadsheet row, select our account. And now it's going to ask us to select a spreadsheet. 
I don't have one yet, so I'm gonna quickly jump over and set one up. Just a little trick for you, if you go to sheets.new, that will actually create a new spreadsheet. Okay, so let's just set up a really simple one. So I'm gonna go title, URL, and publish date. Now if we jump back over to Zapier, actually I might just quickly change the account because I realized I've put that in a different account. And if we open spreadsheet, it'll actually pull this one in at the top because we just created it. I should have given that a name, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that for now. Uh, we're gonna go with the only worksheet in there. And you'll see it's actually pulled through our three columns. So we've got title, URL, and publish date. If you wanted to add a new column here, like a test, uh, then you would jump back over and refresh and it would appear. I'm just gonna go and delete that. But these are the only ones we need for now. So uh, we're gonna map in the title. So we hit this button here and there is the title that came from the RSS trigger in Zapier. So we'll map that in. We'll map in the link or the URL and the publish date. So if we continue, and then uh, test this zap. It says it works, so we jump over and there we can see our post. This is zoomed in a little bit here, so um, it looks a bit funny, uh, just so you can see it better. But now you might wanna bold that first row and sort of lay this out a bit, um, turn the formatting of this into a date. And now basically every single time a post is created on your site or one goes live, you'll actually see them appearing here, just like this. So you may wish to do something like we have and have some other columns here that are like our promotional activities that we do on blog posts. So you can go ahead and create new columns in here. Um, as long as you fill these three out using Zapier each time, it doesn't really matter. You can come back in and Make, modify these columns um, to previously created rows and it will work fine. Uh, one thing to think about is this is obviously only going to work for future posts, right? So any of your previous posts aren't automatically gonna show up in here. If you do want to do that, I'd recommend checking out something like a WP All Export, which is a plugin that'll allow you to export post types to uh, CSV. I'm not gonna run through that process because it's a bit out of the scope of this video, but yeah, you can export to a CSV and then literally just paste the data into your spreadsheet. And if you do need some more information like categories or custom fields, have a look at the WordPress Zapier app. Um, it gives you a few more options uh, than just plain RSS, but in this case, RSS is all we need. That's all for this video. If you would like to get some more free tips and advice on how to automate your business and save a ton of time, please hit that red subscribe button below. Also check out the Zapier Mastery course at jimmyrose.me. I'll also drop the links below. Otherwise, see you in the next video.